Jean-Christophe Masson is co-founder and director of Amanik Masson Associé, an architectural and planning practice based in Paris and Marseille. The practice has recently joined NLA, which I find particularly encouraging and positive at a time when our future relations with the EU are so uncertain. So uh, Jean-Christophe, can you tell me why you decided to get involved with the NLA? Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> uh, first of all, I think that Paris and London have a very strong history together. So with the Eurostar, we are now able to travel to both cities very uh, in about two hours, in fact. And London is the fourth capital of France, <laughs> with more French people than in Bordeaux, for example. So London and Paris are so close, but yet I think that the dynamic uh, of both cities couldn't be more different. So maybe by taking the opposite side of the nationalist uh, policy underway today, uh, we decide to join NLA because I think that in this moment of crisis and uncertain times, uh, with not only the pandemic, but also Brexit and uh, all the discussions happening around social housing, uh, housing for all and accessible housing, I think it's important to work together and to share ideas and stay connected despite the current situation. So we all share the same passion, in fact, and having conversations, meeting architects, urban planners from around the world, I think it's usually important to us. And I cannot conceive the profession of architects as the remaining at the agency to design projects in isolation. I think I, we need to confronting ideas, sharing, discovering, and great work of other architects too, and it's driving force and a necessity for me. And I think uh, this is a real richness for the office. That's why I think. Excellent. As you say, I think uh, <laughs> uh, the discussions between Paris and London, very productive, and uh, you know, we, we, we have a busy program of talking to other cities, and we find it, it very valuable. So, uh, so welcome to NLA. And uh, tell me more about your practice and about the sort of work you do. I think that over the past 20 years, um, the office has acquired um, valuable experience across design and construction and from public to private, uh, mixed use to residential large scale master plans uh, to individual housing. So practice intervention in all sector in France and internationally now. And, uh, but one of the main goal is the, the office is very involved in the issue of housing in dense urban areas and uh, has become an important player, I think, in the debate on tall building in France due to his expertise acquired through various projects. So maybe I can uh, present a few of our important projects for, for you to have a better understanding of our work. So the, the first one is um, the home project in Paris. It's a residential project, but uh, as you know, Paris is a city traumatized by high rise since the seventies. And, <laughs> but the city uh, recently changed the urban planning uh, laws to allow residential buildings to measure up to 50 meters. I mean, it's a intermediate height. And uh, by winning this international competition, we have seized the opportunity to create a new form and uh, construct the first residential high rise in Paris since the 70s. So I think this is an iconic building because we are right next to the peripheric ring road, uh, which separates the historical Paris uh, from the suburbs, in fact. And this building is, the other part of this building is it's exemplary in its uh, programming because it's half is private and half is social in the same place. Um, and within a new form, um, uh, we can create diversity of typologies in social and private housing. It means that out of almost 200 housing units, there are over 100 different typologies. So, and all apartments have an outside space of 20 to 25 square meters. It means that a range of typologies to create an identity for each home. And uh, now this residential building is a spare head of the new approach, I think, to vertical housing in the urban environment. And uh, by reconsidering the city as an opportunity for new horizons, 
And uh, now the building has become a symbol, in fact, of the new urban rules surrounding the uh, height in Paris. So this is the first one. The second one is always in a residential program, but more in the, in the historical context, because France is very uh, rich in terms of historical context, and it's in Le Havre, so it's more in the north of France, and it's an Alta project, and it, overlooking the art of the city center was uh, reconstructed by Auguste Perret and classified as the UNESCO World Patrimony, and which also being located near Oscar Niemeyer uh, Volcano and uh, the city historic monuments. So this project is a building that sits within the unique city of Le Havre, whose history is formed by architecture, in fact. So by taking account specifics of this context, uh, the project attempts to link two territories, I mean, the city and the sea. And uh, its architectural style uh, and a fine expressiveness and combined to create a new piece in the port town skyline. So I think that living here allows people to understand the city and appreciate the richness of the urban tissue that make up this a stunning state site. So I think for an architect, this kind of project is very rare because we have the opportunity to confront a subject with this much uh, symbolic power and evocative force. And uh, this project, I think, will primarily uh, pose the question of our connection to history and heritage. And invention here is introduced within history continuation and not via a style or dogma, but uh, to a certain state of mind. And I mean that Le Havre is an amazing city and is Perrin-Libéard, but above all, uh, it has a sense of modernity because it, the modernity is classified in fact. And uh, it's modernity and architecture adventure on, on the same scale as its original uh, history. And so this is two examples in uh, our residential uh, work. And we are also working on office programs and if the production of this type of program is managed, often managed, I think it's, it's also an opportunity for us to question these standards and to uh, innovate by proposing new typology for workspaces. So I just uh, illustrate this by the Urban Quartz project in Rennes. And uh, it's near the multimodal uh, exchange center and the, the railway, bus, metro, bus station. And uh, this project is initiating uh, the new urban uh, invention of the new area they call Eurorail. So its location is strategic for an iconic program meets the condition for an integrated uh, and lively business sector. And uh, the urban connection, I think, was an invitation for us to a bold and radical architecture. And uh, it's three seasoned uh, buildings stand out the railway uh, landscape and change, I see a regular simple skyline. So it's three buildings were designed to provide great visibility towards the occupiers. And they range from small startups to large companies. And I think it was important that the introduction of three walkways connecting building one and two uh, contribute to this idea of flexibility and thus making it possible to offer variable current flow from 500 to 1,000 uh, square meter of surface. So the interaction between the project and its context is underlining that three urban windows and this huge framing in the landscape occupies a pro uh, to the construction and interact with the city. So I think with the new architectural style and the configuration adapted to the local context, uh, this project offers an alternative to the generic uh, and often the green arm vocabulary of office building. So, and now we are confronted with a new type of uh, programs in France, because recently uh, with the emergence of a new type of international competition where promoters, investors, architects invent the programs as part of their response. And we have had the opportunity to win two important projects of this type, which will soon be under construction. So the first one is in Angers, it's called the Metamorphose Project, and it's a mixed-use project with program of offices, places for association, co-living, uh, block room, fitness, spa, public passage, 
uh, restaurant, tropical greenhouse, and so on, so on, and higher education school. So it's a very complex program, and uh, it was an international winning competition. It's this kind of thing is very innovative in France because it offers a building of 25,000 square meters where the programmatic mix takes place horizontally. Uh, so it will be a private place and also open to the public by different activities that will uh, notably find on the ground floor and which will connect um, and which will connect and activate finally the building with the neighborhood. So here, this programmatic innovation is a conception tool um, that transforms finally unknown places uh, and territories. And it's about finding new ways of living in harmony with the public space and the existing landscape. So here, innovation is a tool for attractivity. And uh, this research provides new program, technical and special, special solution which allow the projects to become, I think, a strong signal. So, and I think that today the idea of community is at the center of many sociological uh, reflection and the uh, human being and its relationship to others is really taken there into account. And uh, with this notion of living well and the conviction that the workplace uh, that promotes relationships and meetings uh, can make ideas circulate better, I think so. And the last one, the last project um, is uh, in this kind of competition too, is, it's called Eye Garden. It's in uh, Royal Malmaison. And it's a mixed use project where you can find housing, retail, uh, co-working, food hall, brewery, panoramic restaurant, viewpoint, and new public spaces. So it was an international competition too, that, we won an uh, urban planning competition, and it's located just near Paris. It's next door to Paris, it's eight kilometers from Paris, just uh, to the west of the city. So the, the project is a creation um, of a dynamic and attractive neighborhood, in fact, on the Brownfield site that uh, currently uh, fractures the town. So the idea is to reconstitute uh, this particular sector and improve. Uh, the surrounding population quality of life. So the area we also see uh, the construction of a new metro station just near in part of the Grand Paris Express uh, development and creating a new dimension uh, for the town and the need for surrounding. So uh, I mean the first of this of this uh, I, I think that my green new dimension for this town the, the, the first aspect in this uh, of this element is housing. And uh, the generosity and di diversity of typologies too, always an exterior space creates a landscape building uh, imagined as a continuation of the existing part, park, the existing park. And uh, we imagine balconies as true green areas and uh, like suspended garden. And so the landscape also creates a level of intimacy thanks to planted balcony partitions. So landscape is also about sharing and uh, which is why the housing project is also home to communal roof garden, which is in 400 square meters, and uh, with green houses and small and large plants counter for growing variety of fruit, vegetables, plants, flowers. And I think that this space has become a junction between individual and the collective. So the idea of communal space continues back down on the ground floor in the public space in the central public square which is also home to an iconic uh, suspended buildings where you can find a bar that's just up above suspended in a cloud and a panoramic restaurant who can just uh, emerge from the clouds in a warm wooden atmosphere. So I think that this panoramic viewpoint overlooks the neighborhood and homes, the variety of trees growing in harmony which is found uh, just in the park. And I think that this project will reveal Roy Malmaison personality, and uh, which aims to make the place a new destination, in fact, a neighborhood devoted to innovation, environmental excellence, well being, and culinary culture, I think. And uh, I think it would be exemplary to the 21st uh, century living. In another part, uh, I think the office is invited to various international consultations and conference lectures to bring uh, its expertise to living well in height 
and uh, new ways of living in changing cities. So we, we've been very interested here in London about uh, Anne Hidalgo's uh, espousal of la vie de Cardeur. Um, <laughs> is that the shape of our future, future cities, do you think? Do you, do you go along with that idea? Uh, as an inhabitant of Paris, uh, I will say that this uh, 15 minute city already exists in Paris. Uh, it has in fact existed, we, we speak about Osman, but it, it has existed since Osman and the establishment of an extremely efficient network of streets, avenues, boulevards, squares, monuments, public space, as well as a typological invention of the Osmanian block and a ground floor dedicated to activity and commerce allows permanent activation uh, of the public space. So thanks, thanks to this urban system, uh, Paris turns out to be one of the cities in Europe where pedestrian mobility is maximum and uh, public transport mobility very high and finally automobile mobility minimal. So the historical Paris, I mean the 20 arrondissement of intramural Paris is uh, first among European cities with more than 1 million inhabitants in terms of uh, pedestrian mobility. So you can find everything you need uh, in terms of shops, service, just near you. And this is also why I think during the first lockdown, uh, things went rather well in Paris. And uh, the ban on going out for more than an hour a day while staying within a radius of one kilometer uh, was possible because this 15 minute city uh, already exists. So this, I think that this urban model could be an example for large cities and for the Grand Paris too. And I think this is a message that uh, Anne Hidalgo wanted to convey. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I think that the idea of this uh, 15 minute city uh, is far from being new. Uh, but for us architects and urban planners, landscapers, uh, we are always working to create self-sufficient uh, neighborhood today and to bring culture, facilities, and services closer to inhabitants. And uh, what has really changed, I think, uh, and created this debate today uh, is the pandemic. And uh, it's like this, this, this could be the starting point, in fact, uh, of reshaping and reorganizing uh, our cities, maybe by reducing the need to, tra to travel and having all sorts of facilities on people's doorsteps uh, from running errands to uh, workplaces, uh, having fun, learning, uh, playing sports, uh, going to the doctors to generally improve, finally, uh, the standard of life of inhabitants. Very good. Well, I tend to uh, agree about the 15-minute uh, city. Of course, London, too, is a polycentric city, and we've had 15-minute uh, uh, cities for some time as well. But I I look forward to the Champs Elysees being <laughs> converted into a park. Uh, so, uh, and uh, look forward to when that will happen. So, uh, Jean Christophe, thank you very much for your comments and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation, Peter. And I hope to see you soon in real. I hope so too. <laughs> I hope so too.